what do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. That was Professor Niku Madhusudan, who back last year in 2023 released a paper explaining how he believes they found evidence of dimethyl sulfide on planet K218b. I mean, think of that. That is just amazing. 50-50 chance of finding alien life, actual proof of alien life. And there's new results that just came in from the James Webb Space Telescope with more advanced detections. So we should know in the next few months. In this video, we'll go through what the detections were and what are the possibilities. Huge ramifications from this. If stay to the end of the video, you'll see an interesting effect on the Drake equation. How would it affect the Drake equation, which is what we can expect how many civilizations actually exist in the Milky Way galaxy. And the number is pretty surprising. So stick around. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Thanks for being here. This is an artist's conception of the first detection of exoplanets. That was the discovery of terrestrial mass planets orbiting the pulsar PSR B1257 plus 12. Say that three times. It was found using the radial velocity method. It involves measuring the Doppler shifts in the light from a star as it wobbles due to the gravitational pull of an orbiting planet. It's been responsible for many early exoplanet discoveries. Then in 1995 was the first confirmed exoplanet orbiting a main sequence star similar to our sun. They detected 51 Pegasi B, a hot Jupiter, and the Kepler Space Telescope launched in 2009 revolutionized the field and discovered thousands of exoplanets using the transit method. The transit method detects exoplanets by measuring dips in a star's brightness caused when a planet crosses in front of it. This method's proven to be the most prolific technique, especially for identifying Earth-sized exoplanets. Then in 2018, just six years ago, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite launched. That continues the work of Kepler, but focuses on closer and brighter stars for better follow-up study. And then finally, launched at the end of 2021, thank God, was the JWST, James Webb Space Telescope. It's designed to offer unprecedented observational capabilities, including detailed atmospheric characterization of exoplanets. That's what's been so exciting. So last year, 2023, Webb discovers methane carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of K218b. And not only that, discovered what could be a definite biomarker of biological life, dimethyl sulfide, which is only produced by phytoplankton. K218b is located about 124 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Leo. That is really, really close if you consider it's 30,000 light years to the center of our galaxy. If life were confirmed on K218b, it would be a monumental discovery with far-reaching implications for the prevalence of life in the universe. We'll show you at the end of this video how it affects the Drake equation. According to research, red dwarf stars like K218's host star are very common in the Milky Way, making up about 70 to 80% of the stars in our galaxy. Our solar system and sun is relatively rare. Many of these stars have been found to host exoplanets, including Earth-sized to Neptune-sized planets. K2HB is a much larger planet. It's a mini Neptune, they're calling it. Ongoing surveys and missions such as Kepler, TESS, and future missions continue to refine our understanding of how many habitable planets are in the galaxy, but it's very large. For instance, some estimates from Kepler data suggest that there could be as many as 40 billion Earth-sized planets orbiting in the habitable zones of sun-like stars and red dwarfs in the Milky Way. Imagine that 40 billion Earth-sized planets. Assuming even conservative estimates were only a small fraction of the habitable zone planets around red dwarfs are truly habitable and can sustain life, and given the number of red dwarf stars, there could still be millions of such planets in the Milky Way alone. Millions of habitable planets 
And if life on K2-18B were confirmed, and this implied a higher likelihood of life developing under similar conditions, the estimated number of life-bearing planets could increase significantly, potentially into the tens of millions. These are speculative numbers, though. We're still waiting on the results. The Kepler mission found this planet in 2015, but then Hubble confirmed that there is water vapor there. So there is water. And then based on the spectroscopy from James Webb Space Telescope, Professor Madhusudan thinks that this is a Hycian planet or Hycian planet. Basically, it's a ocean planet, right? Water ocean, large water ocean, but with a H2 hydrogen atmosphere surrounding it. And this is the atmosphere composition from the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the near IR spec. Okay, we're waiting on the mid-range IR, which is much more accurate, and we'll be able to break this out. But as you see, methane was definitely confirmed, as was carbon dioxide, and this is dimethyl sulfide. So here and here, it could be one part in a million, which is much more than here on Earth, but it still needs to be confirmed. If dimethyl sulfide is confirmed and the new results just coming in now, then that means there's a high likelihood that life exists on this planet, which would just be amazing, would be amazing. It took me about a week to muster the courage to even think that that's anywhere close to real and break it to my own group, my own students <laughs> working with me. So, so you don't drink anyone, you're just shell-shocked for a while. And then we slowly all come together and work on it for many more months uh, before, uh, weeks and months before we robustly establish it and then you, you publish it and so on. And to the extent that the James Webb Telescope is what, as we speak, looking at this particular exoplanet K218b to see what images it can get of it. Yeah, it just happened this morning, actually. So, so it has already done it uh, early this morning. Uh, so we have the observations they're beaming um, uh, in right now. Uh, so we're waiting for the data to come to us and the analysis will start anytime now. Wow. So you could, how long is it going to take to fully analyze this? So, so we will obviously take our time to do very careful analysis. So it's going to be months before uh, we can say anything uh, for sure. What do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. Wow, that high? I, I, yeah, and that's purely going by what the data has been telling us in the past and what, uh, what we know from theory. Uh, it it could be fifty fifty. It is very high, I know, uh, but but that's that's what the is, data this is. Again, dumb question, but I think you know context matters here. Is that have there been other situations, other discoveries where they've said, right, we think this is fifty fifty. We think this is about as close as we've ever been to discovering it. Not on an exoplanet, never. Not a planet outside the solar system. Okay, wow, so exciting. So we'll know in the next few months based on that higher res data from the medium IR sensor on the JWST, whether dimethyl sulfide is actually there or not. And so far, we don't know any other ways that this molecule can be produced unless biological. And this planet is in the Goldilocks zone. We confirmed it and it has water. It has liquid water on it, water vapor. And now they have all these biological molecules. So that means just within 124 light years, there's a planet that we could confirm in the next few months that actually has life on it. Very high indication of life, alien life. That is just unbelievable. And so now look, let's look at how that affects the Drake equation. What are the chances that we have an alien civilization in the Milky Way? The Drake equation is a probabilistic formula used to estimate the number of active communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. It was formulated by astronomer Frank Drake in 1961 and serves as a framework to guide scientific discussions on this topic. Here is the equation. So N is the number of civilizations in our galaxy with which radio communication might be possible. R star is the average rate of star formation per year in our galaxy. FP is the fraction of those stars that have planetary systems. N is the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets. FL is the fraction of planets that could support life that actually develop at, set, at some point. 
FI is the fraction of those planets with life that actually go on to develop intelligence, intelligent life civilizations. And FC is the fraction of those civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable, detectable signs of their existence out into space. And finally, big L is the length of time for which civilizations release detectable signals into space. Okay, so now let's apply the Drake equation with some hypothetical values on K218b. So our star, let's use seven average rate of star formation in the, in the Milky Way based on recent estimates. P, let's use one, assuming every star has at least one planet supported by recent exoplanet surveys, and they have more than one planet, but let's just use at least one. NE of 0.3, so this is the hypothetical average number of habitable stars per star, slightly optimistic, so how many can be habitable? 0.3 per star. FL, 0.1, so if it's within 124 light years, we're assuming life is somewhat common, so 0.1 of those planets now actually have life 10%. So KT8, K218b having life would increase our estimate of this fraction. So we put it 0.1. And now let's just say that 1% of those planets has intelligent life. So still assuming intelligent life is quite rare, only 1% of the planets get develop intelligent life. And then only 0.1, so 10% of those intelligent civilizations actually create technology that we can detect. And then finally for L, we use 10,000 years. So an optimistic estimate for how long civilizations might be detectable. Plugging these values into the Drake equation, we get 21. So that means this calculation would suggest there's potentially 21 detectable civilizations in our galaxy at any given time, assuming these optimistic parameters influenced by the discovery of life on K218b. So that would drastically change the math, wouldn't it? If scientists can't believe that there's actually alien life here now, if we find and confirm life on K218b or another exoplanet similar to it nearby, that means there's a much higher chance that there's intelligent life in our galaxy and in the universe, obviously. And based on the Drake equation, you saw there some optimistic speculative numbers, that would mean 21 civilizations, 21 intelligent alien civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy at any given time. That would totally change the math. What do you guys think of this discovery? Do you think they'll confirm it or it'll be like phosphine gas on Venus? This looks like, as the professor said, the closest we've ever been to actually discovering life and the data has already been downloaded to Earth. They're analyzing it right now. So subscribe to get notifications of when that data actually comes out. If you did like this video, please hit the like button and consider becoming a Patreon like these fine people here at patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. You get early ad-free access to all my videos and above the $5 level, everyone, all patrons get merchandise. So check out Lato Files merchandise if you want some of that. Consider becoming a patron and supporting the channel. But thanks for being here. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.